हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर महेश मोहिते फ्रॉम महाराष्ट्र पनवेल एंड हियर अगेन फॉर द नेक्स्ट टॉक ऑफ स्टीयर सीरीज व्हिच इज अ बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट फ्रॉम डॉक्टर वाई के अंबेडकर सर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक ऑन एंडोक्राइनल मैनिफेस्टेशंस ऑफ नॉन एंडोक्राइनल डिसऑर्डर्स सो इफ यू लुक एट द कॉमन एंडोक्राइनल डिसऑर्डर्स क्लिनिकल मैनिफेस्टेशंस कॉमनली दे कुड बी ग्रोथ फेलियर एज वी सी इन ग्रोथ हार्मोन और थायरॉइडल एबनॉर्मलिटीज commonly it could be lab abnormalities of metabolic abnormality like in case of insulin related disorders we have got hypo or hyperglycemia in case of parathyroid this is we may have seizures or tetanic coming out of hypocalcemia or sometimes hypercalcemia as well it could be cortisol related problem which may come with hypo or hypernatremia hypo or hyperkalemia at times it can be associated with even sugar related hypoglycemia it could be catecholamine abnormalities which may occur in occasional case of pheochromocytoma which will come with hemodynamic abnormalities the other set of abnormalities could be sex hormone related problems which may be precocious puberty or delayed puberty which can be a uh, abnormal cycle of pubertal onset like premature thalarchy adrenarchy puberty or it could be one gynecomastia presenting like this the posterior pituitary problems like sidh and di may also manifest on a clinical ground with the endocrinal disorders but all these abnormalities can be seen even in the absence of primary endocrinal problem and they will be coming with similar presentation though the underlying pathology may not be primary or secondary endocrinal pathology so let's come at growth failure it is manifestation of short stature and with or without loss of or poor weight gain it can happen with any chronic persistent systemic disorders like a renal disorder which may be glomerular or tubular pathology it can come with chronic liver disease it can come with chronic lung disease like interstitial lung or a chronic gi disease like malabsorption syndrome celiac or short bowel disorders how do we differentiate growth failure of endocrinal versus non endocrinal commonly the endocrinal growth failure is short stature with or without obesity rarely it is underweight it's either appropriate weight or large for weight as compared to the height we say this in a chronic systemic disorder usually there is weight loss far more than height loss which is like a chronic malnutrition secondary to underlying systemic pathology in growth failure due to non endocrinal disorder you also get features appropriate for underlying disorders like you can have interstitial lung disease which may be associated with fatigue hypoxia and clubbing you may have glomerular chronic renal diseases like giving rise to hypertension anemia and edema you have tubular renal diseases like which will be giving rise to polyuria rickets features of electrolyte abnormality it can be chronic liver disease which will be associated with jaundice edema ascites etc and it can be malabsorption syndrome which is primarily from the gi pathology which may have features of multiple nutritional factor deficiencies like associated rickets skin swelling because of pro scaling and abnormal hairs and colors due to protein loss or amino acid deficiencies it can be giving rise to edema of a quasi worker there could be mood fluctuations again because of amino acid disorders so so many associated features which may give you a clue towards the primary underlying systemic pathology to cause a growth failure due to systemic disorder the disease process has to be continuous and not intermittent the recurrent chronic asthma will rarely give rise to growth failure because in between period for days weeks or months together child is having normal metabolism so there won't be growth failure we said this if there is a chronic interstitial pathology which is continuous ongoing process there will be a growth failure coming to the next that is metabolic abnormalities so how glucose will kind of mislead you towards probable endocrinal pathology so the insulin disorders can present as hyper or hypoglycemia but they can present in systemic disorders also like resistant hypoglycemia may be picked up in inborn error of metabolism like glycogen storage or fatty acid oxidation defect you can see in a severe sepsis there is the resistant hypoglycemia because ever con- over consumption of sugar from the, the metabolic process as well as the microorganisms and it can also come with drug induced hypoglycemia 
The other possibility is hyperglycemia, which may be seen in any stress-induced condition and sometimes even a drug-induced etiology. You may have hyperglycemia, which may be misled as diabetes mellitus in a given case. What about sodium? The cortisone and aldosterone abnormality in hormone disorders like congenital, for example, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, you may get hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. In a non-endocrinal pathology, you will see that in a renal losses, sodium may be lost. It could be retention of water or sodium can cause abnormal levels. So, in case of a renal glomerular pathology with retention of water and the, the dilution and hyponatremia. In case of a syndrome of inappropriate di uh, secretion of ADH, inappropriate secretion of antidiuretic hormone which will be a pseudo hyponatremia or kind of a hyponatremia because again retention of water. So you will give these kind of pathologies which will give rise to uh, mimic or masquerading a like pos likely kind of a presentation of an endocrinal pathology. Hyperkalemia and hyponatremia in combination of adrenal failures can also be seen but that also can be seen in a renal failure. So, sodium and potassium abnormalities can mislead you towards probable underlying endocrinal pathology. As far as calcium is concerned, hypocalcemia is seen in hypoparathyroidism and rickets also. It may present with titani and seizure in both the cases. In rickets, how to differentiate between two possibilities this hypoparathyroidism versus rickets? In case of hypoparathyroidism, you will have associated hyperphosphatemia. In case of rickets, there is associated hypophosphatemia. That's the reason when you come across this kind of a situation, one should be doing asking for calcium, phosphorus and alkaline phosphatase as a complete screen rather than just looking at calcium levels. There is a complete chapter of critical illness endocrinopathy in a critical illness. There are many manifestations which may be with electrolyte abnormalities, resistant shock, resistant hypoglycemia. They may there could be underlying endocrinal pathology which is not a primary which is secondary to the critical illness. So we need to really look at uh, that we should need to understand that contribution. Sometimes you may have a refractory shock where ultimately you may be thyroxine and the child starts stabilizing with that or a cortisol and child will start stabilizing with that. So those are kind of a respective disorders or kind of deficiency which are come secondary to the critical illness. Common abnormalities that are found are thyroxine related, insulin related, cortisol, glucagon, catecholamine, growth hormone and these are the hormones which are disturbed because of the critical illness. They can cause receptor sensitivity as well which will give sort of a pseudo hyperfunctioning features which ultimately will manifest as those hormonal abnormalities in a given clinical scenario. The last section probably is important is sex hormone clinical mimics. So you may have pituitary tumor which may present with precocious puberty with a natural sequence which may be recognized with associated other hormone abnormalities. So, it won't be affecting one particular hormone. There could be multiple endocrinal abnormalities in a given patient because of the pro-hormones abnormalities. Then adrenal or pituitary tumor may present with precocious puberty, not following the natural sequence of thalarchy, pubarchy and menarche. So, this is a natural sequence of thalarchy, pubarchy and menarche, which is commonly seen with the central kind of a onset may it be natural or unnatural as in case of some kind of tumor up there but when it comes arises from the peripheral organ so it could be adrenal or kind of ovarian or testicular kind of abnormalities where this kind of a sequence may be lost that's how one would clinically differentiate from a secondary pathology abdominal truncal stri sometimes a rapidly growing child may have those stri on the abdomen which may be looking like a hypercortisolism or cortisol related problems and that need to be taken or kind of understood in a given appropriate perspective. Obesity and sex hormone imbalance has a great relationship. So, gynecomastia and obesity, it's usually due to estrogen production from fat by the aromatase enzyme which is available in the peripheral fat tissue. So as obesity increases, the fat tissue is converted into estrogen by this hormone which is available in the peripheral tissue. There could be hypogonadism which will be seen in case of obesity. Now here the penis may be embedded in a thick pad of fat in the pubic area and it could be pseudo mimicking like a hypogonadism. So one need to be doing a proper penile stretch penile length to estimate the exact length of this penis. Increased estrogen and lower testosterone also can hamper these abnormalities. Increased leptin and insulin resistance is associated with diabetes. Fatty liver dysfunction 
कैन गिव रेस्ट टू अंडर मेटाबलाइजिंग इस्ट्रोजन एंड विच वी ऑल नो इन अ केस ऑफ लिवर सेल फेलियर यू मे से फीचर्स ऑफ हाइपर इस्ट्रोजन लाइक अ थिंग्स लाइक लाइक अ क्लिनिकल प्रेजेंटेशन सर्टन ड्रग्स लाइक ग्लूकोकॉटिकॉइड्स आई मे डर ऑन ग्लूकोकॉटिकॉइड कैन हैव अब नॉर्मलिटीज आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कप्ड विथ ऑल कैंड ऑफ स्टीरॉइड रिलेटेड इशूज एमिडोरन कैन कॉज थायरॉइड डिस्फंक्शन एंटीसाइकोटिक ड्रग्स लाइक अमेनोरिया गैलेक्टोरिया हाइपर लैक्टिटी प्रो लैक्टिटिनिमिया देर कुड बी कीमोथेरापेटिक ड्रग्स गिविंग राइज टू गोनाडल फेल्यूअर्स ग्रोथ इम्पेयरमेंट सो वी नीड टू री बी रियली गेटिंग इन टू डिटेल्स ऑफ द हिस्ट्री एंड क्लिनिकल इवेल्युएशन फॉर रूलिंग आउट दिस सेकेंडरी सिस्टमिक पैथोलॉजीज और ड्रग पैथोलॉजीज before labeling something like a endocrinal disorder so that was summary of this just to kind of a recap the whole thing which is you may see growth failure as a manifestation of systemic pathology there could be metabolic abnormalities like a glucose sodium potassium calcium abnormalities or there could be critical illness endocrinopathy where multiple hormonal abnormalities will be seen or it could be sex hormone clinical mimics abnormality so precocious puberty precocious the abnormal sequence of thalarchy puberty and uh, uh, menarche so those kind of scenarios one may be thinking of a secondary uh, patholo- underlying pathology which is mimic with endocrine and last but not the least the modern lifestyle giving rise to obesity giving rise to so many problems and one more is being drugs which need to be ruled out so thank you very much for this review and it's over to the next session of steer thank you very much